man, I'm really excited to be a vampire. Let's talk. What up, viewers? What up? What up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, February 2nd, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week video game news. Uh, going somewhat in order, uh, starting off with Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Uh, the latest update from the Chinese room showed us a gameplay trailer, so no more teasing the clans with 15-second teasers and little snapshots. We actually get to see about like a minute or so of gameplay, uh, followed by some story beats, which the story really seems to be there, and that's something that I'm very excited for uh, for a studio that's known for making walking simulators. Um, but uh, yeah, I know the story's going to be there, but the cool thing was to actually see some gameplay, and um, <clears throat> the the kind of melee combat seemed a little par for the course. I'm excited to see kind of how vampire powers get ramped up as you as you pick a different vampire clan and and specialize your own your vampire in a, in your own ways um that'll affect your gameplay style so i can already kind of see the inklings of how i can how my vampire is going to be different than everyone else's vampire and and i'm really looking forward to that and just in general i think the game storyline is going to be spectacular and it, and it needs to be because the first one storyline was really good as well um so they have to really have that kind of immersive sim narrative going on uh which i think they'll nail and then the, the melee combat, or at least the combat seems like it's going to be it's going to be there. So I'm very excited for it. We still don't have a confirmed date for when Bloodlines 2 is going to come out, um, but I am very excited to play that. And so I wanted to talk about that first this week. Moving right along, Rocksteady's latest game and, and first game in nine years uh, is finally out. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League launch today. Um, and... Uh, it's it's off to a pretty rocky start. Um, it's got it's currently at a 63 Metacritic, but I know that like IGN and some of the bigger uh, outlets were kind of delayed on getting their codes to play the game. So uh, those are still pending and might significantly shift that Metacritic. But last time I checked, it was at a 63 Metacritic, which is not good. Um, I think there's a lot of disconnect and a lot of high expectations going in as Rocksteady is created, uh, you know, is known for making the the great batman arkham games um and so i think there's a lot of expectation that went into this to be similar and that and they're just not the same game so uh i think there's a little disconnect there um i'm only a couple hours into it but i am enjoying playing a multiplayer game you know with pretty funny characters to get behind um but you know i i think that uh it it's it's pretty rough where it is right now so uh let me know if you pick it up down below in the comments Moving right along, Sony's first direct of the month of the year uh, was this week. Uh, the Sony State of Play talked about a lot of games, and I'm not going to talk about all of them. There's a handful of games, um, or uh, probably about a dozen games, but uh, the ones that caught my eye was it started off strong with Helldivers 2. Uh, I'm very excited for Helldi playing Helldivers this week. I know I just picked up Suicide Squad, but I really also want to get my friends together to shoot big alien bugs in a Starship Trooper-like dystopian future um, in Helldivers 2. So, uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that and got to see a little bit more gameplay of that this week. Uh, there was 10 minutes dedicated to Death Stranding, just whatever Kojima's doing with the next game, which uh, it seems very in line, but I didn't play the first one, so uh, still a little confused about everything that goes on in that. Um, and then I am, I am very, very, very excited that uh, I got to see a little bit more on Judas, uh, Judas is the latest Ken Levine game from Ghost Story Games. Uh, Ken Levine, the creative director behind Bioshock, my favorite game of all time. Um, and I was just actually thinking when I was thinking of Bioshock this week, uh, I was thinking like, oh, obviously you go to space with it. Like, you know, you started underwater, then you had the floating city uh, and then you have to go up into space and do space Bioshock, which is exactly what Judas looks like. Uh, and I'm very excited for that game. Uh, I think that's kind of what they were doing with Prey, but I don't know that Prey kind of lived up to uh, the expectation there. But hey, Prey was still a really good game, but uh, very excited for Judas. Uh, there's also two Silent Hill projects that looked pretty interesting. Uh, there was a VR, um, there was like a fantasy VR game that looked pretty cool if I ever managed to get myself a VR headset. Um, so all of that looked pretty cool, uh, but most of all highlights were, for me, uh, Helldivers 2 and Judas. 
uh, two games I'm very much looking forward to, one of which I don't have to wait that long to play. Moving right along, in a recent documentary talking about The Last of Us, uh, Neil Druckmann talked about how the storyline of The Last of Us, which for anybody who played two, felt pretty final, um, <clears throat> how there's still some legs to the story and that he's looking to potentially turn The Last of Us into a trilogy. So hopefully Naughty Dog is at work uh, making Last of Us Part 3, um, but probably won't see that for another half decade or so. So, uh, But we'll be excited to run around whether or not I'm playing as Ellie or as Abby with uh, whoever her ward was. Uh, I forget who the ward was that on that game. Uh, in that game it's been a while i do need to pick up the remaster which launched last week so um but i haven't picked that one up yet but i'm looking forward to playing the third and potentially final uh part of the last of us we got a big uh big 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 news bond this week with uh pal world has been slowly or not not even slowly quickly releasing their player counts but most of the time those have been steam like sales numbers uh, now we got the big total number this week. Uh, Pal World is up to 19 million, 12 million of which are on Steam and 7 million of which are on Microsoft, potentially playing that on Game Pass. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, 20 million players. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, we'd only been seeing like 5, 6, 7 million, uh, knowing that that was only the Steam number. But the fact that we're up to 12 million after a week and a half or so at 7 million Game Pass, it's the first time we've gotten any Game Pass data. So uh, 20 million players. Uh, I'm starting to think like, what are the cross collabs that they're going to do now that they're starting to put real numbers on the board? Uh, what are the, what's the merch opportunities? Are we going to get, you know, weird pow world merch to wear next to our, and put them in our closet next to our Pokemon merch? Like, uh, it's going to be pretty weird when that stuff starts happening, but, uh, congrats to the team at pow world, uh, for, for, uh, making a game that's catching on like this. So, uh, uh, excited to see more details there. Uh, the CEO of Tencent talked about all the difficulties they had during 2023 last year and actually implicating that 2023 was a bad year in gaming, uh, which I don't know that that was true for the industry as, as a whole. Uh, I mean, Baldur's Gate and Tears of the Kingdom and Alan Wake 2 all come to mind, all the Game Awards winning games, Marvel, Spider-Man 2. So uh, I think 2023 was actually a really great year for gaming uh at least in the past six or seven years i think back to like 2017 was the most was the previous biggest year in gaming at least in my mind um and it uh, it's also it's also hard to kind of listen to the woes of of the 10 cent ceo while they have games like league of legends and fortnite just printing money every every month um so yeah it was it was just a little weird to see like uh, how disillusioned and, and listening to any CEO talk about what's going on is uh, probably not the best. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to poke a few holes on this bad year 2023 coming from Tencent, the owners of both Epic and Riot, as well as a bunch of different other uh, uh, studios and, and majorly invested across the board. Uh, so don't really know where they were getting at with this. You know, 2023 was a bad year, probably for them because they didn't do very much besides have League of Legends of Fortnite, but uh, although the at least some of the things I was talking about last year were like Fortnite now having a, a racing mode and a rhythm mode and, and like all these other modes that are like killing major games like Rocket League. Like, I, I yeah, I just don't see where like it was bad for us. Uh, can't really can't really get behind that storyline. Speaking of Tencent, uh, there was a rumor that began this week that uh, the Wizards of the Coast, owned by Hasbro, was looking to off-put uh, the D&D IP, the Dungeons & Dragons IP. Uh, that was quickly squashed. It was just a rumor uh, that started at the beginning of the week. But uh, yeah, it was quickly squashed that they were going to sell it to, D to, to uh, Tencent. Speaking of things like Baldur's Gate 3, I do think that like D&D might have a slightly inflated price if you wanted to sell something like that right now. So it might actually be a good time to get in while Baldur's Gate 3 is still fresh in everybody's mind, uh, you know, coming off the, the magic set and the movie, if they're working on a second movie, um, you know, there's a lot of potentially slightly inflated hype around Dungeons and Dragons. And so it, it could make sense that they're trying to off put it, but it's also, I'm very curious what wizards, you know, moneymakers besides magic are, uh, if they sell off D and D. So, 
yeah, I, I, I didn't think much of this and, and it, it all kind of struck us. It struck me and my friends a little weird uh, seeing that story pop up this week. So glad that Wizards of the Coast uh, squashed that rumor. Blizzard has finally started listening us, listening to us, uh, or at least to me. Uh, they uh, mysteriously put Warcraft 1 and 2 and Diablo 1 onto Battle.net. Uh, when you click on them, there's nothing there, but it's just they are there to be clicked on, uh, which is already starting the engines rolling of like, are they going to remaster them? Are they just going to release them as is with whatever, you know, slight tweaks they have to do to, to make it compatible on modern hardware? Um, but I'm really looking forward to a remaster. I've been wanting to play uh, Warcraft 1 and 2 uh, for quite some time, so I'm really excited. Ever since I got into uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged, uh, I've been wanting the kind of first and second one so I can kind of play them all in one place. Um, and I bet a lot of people are too, and then people who've been wanting to play the, the original Diablo, hopefully this answers their, uh, answers their needs as well, so... Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what they do more, but all we have is just a little bit of breadcrumbs in that Warcraft 1 and 2 are on Battle.net now, so you can go click on those and, and be interested and intrigued by what's going to happen there. Uh, slightly tangentially related, uh, the uh, Starcraft 3 that we will never get is launching this year. Um, no, uh, Stormgate which is made by a bunch of ex blizzard developers is an RT is a real time strategy game, um, that has been kind of in the pre you know, been kind of in the alpha beta phase for quite some time. Um, and it is now fully funded on Kickstarter. It reached its $2 million goal. Um, and so a lot of people are probably overhyping it a little bit when they call it a Starcraft killer, but it is kind of the next evolution of, of somewhere between Warcraft three and Starcraft, uh, is the gameplay that is Stormgate. So uh, I think a lot of people are really excited for it. There's a lot of really cool RTSs coming out this this year. And so I think, uh, you know, people are excited to see that Stormgate will be dropping sometime soon. So look forward to that in the, uh, in the near future. Last but not least, Among Us, everyone's favorite Jacuse game, um, is getting turned into an animated TV show. Uh, and I think a week to week space with kind of zany uh kind of zany who done it antics is going to be pretty fun i mean uh you know it's it is pretty fun to see you know things like uh knives out get like poke poke it among us uh you know being in that who done it category but an animated tv show that's kind of fun and zany i could see is as being really popular so uh and backing on to a already very popular uh, you know, video game that exploded a couple years ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I would watch the hell out of a Among Us TV show, and and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, whichever platforms it's going to be on. I tried to Google it, and it looks like it's made by a CBS studio. I don't know if that means it'll be on Peacock or if it'll be on some other platform. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking out Among Us TV show uh, sometime soon. But that's it for this week. Let me know if you feel I forgot anything down below in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. Uh, I haven't seen any new subscribers in quite some time, so if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button to make sure it still works, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. But as always, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope you have a super day. Bye!